How's it going, everybody? So today, we're going to be taking a segment to talk about my fishing essentials for surf casting. So when I'm surf casting for stripers, there's a few things that I think that are in my arsenal that are just necessary things that anybody should have while fishing. When I'm fishing on the rocks, it's slippery, it's pretty hectic, there's waves crashing on you, um, it's something you gotta be prepared for. And there's crazy weather that can swing in in an instant. So, in order to battle those things, there's a few things that a lot of surf casters around here have that you can really ask anyone, they'll, they're pretty similar items, but I found that not a lot of people have a designated YouTube video to tell us, or to tell me or you, the, the beginner at surf fishing, what you need to be safe on the rocks, on the beaches, estuaries, anywhere. So let's get into it. So the first thing I want to talk about, this is probably going to be my least essential item. Uh, these are Gruden's deck boots. I wear a size, so these are our size 13. I have big feet. These are size 13 deck boots. So you can see the bottoms of these. Well, really the bottom of these don't matter because what I'm doing with these boots are really quickly. So the reason why these boots are so essential is when I'm fishing on the rocks, I don't like to be standing in a soaking wet puddle for six hours in a day. If I get, if I step into a tide pool to make sure I revive a fish right or I get hit by a wave or something. With these, the good thing is if these fill up completely with water, these are also waterproof on the outside, so any waves that are going up to here, I'm fine. Uh, what I can do with these, fill with water, just take them off, pour them out, put them back on. This is why I like them so much. Um, so with these, comes the most essential thing you'll ever need fishing. Corkers. So, I was introduced to corkers this year. And I'm very happy I was because I probably wouldn't be fishing this year if I didn't have them. So this is what your corkers will look like after one season of good use. Um, my spikes are mainly rusted and they will fall out, they will bend, um, they lose a lot of their edges. I mean I've lost just this one sole, I've lost one, two, three. So there's something you've got to uh, constantly be checking on, making sure you still have enough to even go out. But with these, with the corkers, what they do is, so essentially, you can see these straps here on these. Just clip in this to this. You'll take these, clip them into your boots, and they'll stay tight around your boots and your feet. So when I'm walking on some slippery, algae-covered rock that's a death trap for anybody, um, without these, these what they'll do, I'm pretty sure these were meant as ice spikes or definitely not for surf fishing. I've known that now for a while. They still work very well for, for what I do. When you walk on the rocks, these little stone, not stone, uh, little metal picks will catch in the rock. And it's, I mean, people say it's like ice, so when you hit the rock like that, and you, you all, and you push your foot kinda like this against the rock, you're not getting any slide. It's sticking in like a spike and it's staying in there. That is really essential for the rough conditions, uh, the weather, the rocks, just really everything in general. So, first two, get, I would, these aren't the most essential things you need. Waterproof deck boots, these are good. And for sure corkers, you need these. Next thing, so when I'm fishing after dark, I gotta put new batteries in this. So when I'm fishing after dark, or going into sunset, or fishing dark before sunrise, anytime that you need a little light, you need a headlamp. So a headlamp is so viable because when you have one, and you're on the rocks at two in the morning or whatever, or 12 at night, um, or even just walking home, that's the biggest part, I feel, for me. Sorry, I'm coming off COVID here, so my throat's a little... 
screwed up. Um, so when you're walking on the rocks at night and you have your corkers and your boots on or whatever you got them on, you need something to see with. So when I'm walking to my spot and I'm trying to find somewhere I'll stage up for a good amount of time, um, I'm using this to spot out holes, whatever, anything I could step in and hurt myself. Um, just to see tight knots. And you wanna get a headlamp that has, uh, there should be a red light function on it, where you can press one of the buttons on here like this, and I put batteries in this, and it'll put out this red light that supposedly fish can't see as well or at all. So you're not spooking away any bass that could be close up. Uh, yeah, so headlamps, fishing after dark, I'd say that's pretty necessary. Next thing is, you need pliers. I tried to go for my first, when I first started really fishing a couple years ago, I didn't have pliers for a while, and it cost me when I caught some bass that were harder to hook, get the hook out of, and it was pretty risky, but you get them back. It's just, when you have a set of pliers and you're on the rocks, you're holding a schoolie that got a SP minnow the size of its like half of its body and its face and it's got trouble shaking everywhere. You just want to grab, whip it, hopefully you can support it, use your pliers, take out the hooks, and switch to singles, that'll help too. Um, take the hooks out and get it back in the water as fast as you can, or keep it in the water if that's possible. Uh, and I get pliers. I'm not a big fan of the line cutters here on the inside. I'd rather have them on the outside. I feel like it works better and breaks less. These are Danco ones. I'm not a huge fan. Um, they've been breaking on me, as you can see. I'll try and focus in on that. They break down over time, and I don't like that. So what you do want to get are Van Stahl makes a really, really nice set of pliers. I don't have the money to get that, but if you do, I would. So leader is something that I thought I should cover because when I'm fishing on the rocks, I really didn't know this till honestly this year. This year was one of my biggest years for surf casting. It was probably my biggest year starting it. So when I'm fishing on the rocks and I've got my jumping metal on and I've, I, on my rod, I have a pretty light setup. I fish 20 pounds super slick because I don't find my braided line really ever breaking. And people have told me it will, and I'm sure it will, so we'll let it happen. But what I'm fishing is uh, this 30 pound Seaguar inshore. This is the, the light blue color. Most people fish the dark blue. I don't, doesn't seem to make much of a difference to me. This one works very well. Um, so you want to have an abrasion resistant line because that's going to be what's pretty much protecting your line from going on these rocks and getting ripped in half by barnacles, rocks, hooks, fishes, like gill plates, scales, spines, it's lots to worry about. So as long as you can have, I fish, um, 30 pounds is my base. So when I'm fishing uh, my rod, I have about I don't know, this much, 30 pounds, for a carbon attached to my uh, uni to uni knot, my line. <laughs> so, yeah, that's what you want to do for, you need flora. I'd say, I didn't really, I wasn't open to it till this, almost this year, because I didn't, I never really thought of it, but then I realized how much I needed it, when you lose small fish to problems that you would never have with this. Uh, what else do we have? So the next thing I'm going to talk about is uh, it's less essential and more things that you could add to be essential. Okay, so here's my rod. I've seen it before. So this, you just quit it. <laughs> um, so this is my rod. It's the nine foot ODM. You can see that it's four thousand Saltex. Um, so when I'm fishing on the rocks, I'm sure you've seen a million people talk about it and I've had a million people tell me, get a sealed reel, you need it, you're going, you're wasting your money. 
and I was. I was definitely doing that because I went through a few reels now that were cheap, um, not meant for walking out to rocks in water this high, getting hit by waves when I'm just standing in the water, uh, dropping on the rocks when I'm getting when I'm falling or whatever. So uh, you should definitely. What I'm trying to say here is. You should try and invest in a nice reel or rod. Um, it pays off because when I'm fishing and I have a nice bass on or a blue or whatever, and I'm trying to land it, and with my seven foot six uh, Saint Croix, I can't really flip that up a rock if it's a twenty eight inch bass with a nine foot uh, ODM, I can do that pretty easily, and I'm able to fight the fish and cast to where I want it to be and do what I need to do. And the biggest part here, I think, is the reel. A fishing reel gets so much abuse from surf casters. So when I'm fishing, this is placed on the ground, put in seaweed, riding on a mic, it's going everywhere. So that's the bigger thing I think is invest in a nice rod and reel and it will invest the fish to you. So yeah, um, I think that's all I got to cover is safety on the rocks is something you should always make sure is important because it's what's keeping you there and if you don't have a good time on the rocks you're probably not going to have a good time getting fish so yeah that's my top five or six things you need to get on the rocks for your safety and to make yourself a better fisherman all right thanks for watching guys see you next time